Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today's video, the topic is going to be Java 25 new features. And since there's a lot of them, I'm only going to try and do an overview for today. We'll do some deep dives later, hopefully, on this channel. So uh, Java turned 30 this year. It's a 30-year-old programming language, uh, older than many of the coders these days that are working on it. So it only makes sense that in 2025 we are getting Java release version 25. It would be called long-term support version. Uh, it's that version again, but it doesn't really matter that much these days as we are getting new Java and every one of those Java versions are, is going to have some pre-release stuff included, some stuff being released. So uh, you have a few options these days to use Java. You can use Java 21, the previous long-term support version, and jump from there to Java 25 when it becomes available. Or you can just keep on updating Java whenever a new major version comes available. So what are the new features of Java 25 anyways? I'm glad you asked. Let's jump into them. Here is the full list, uh, as always, links in the description section of my video. And obviously, instead of listening to my voice, uh, you can just grab the link, uh, open up every one of them and see the provided samples. But I try to make some kind of sense out of these, uh, structure these, if you like. So one kind of immediate uh, structuring we can do here is to understand that uh, a lot of these are still in the preview. And I'm not going to put too much emphasis on preview things. We can uh, list them separately, uh, but every one of them is available for you to use, but it might still change before it gets to the final release. Some of these might even get dropped altogether. And uh, we also have experimental and in incubator level stuff here. I've talked a lot about Vector API on my channel, it's still in 10th incubator, so it's not even, even preview yet. So, <laughs> what can I say? Well, many of these features are not relevant for all Java coders, just kind of fraction of them. And Vector API is one of those, so it can be a big deal, but for a lot of you, you will probably never even touch it. So anyways, let's make a list of the stuff that's not in preview that's not in incubator, and that's not uh, a removal. We have one removal here, so 32-bit x86 port is going to be removed. But what we are then left, what's remaining? Just a few features that might be worth mentioning. So there's the scoped values feature here. Uh, to summarize, what are the scoped values uh, about? It's relevant if you are dealing with threads. So it's not a full replacement for thread local uh, values, but it's a kind of alternative that you can use, API-based alternative. Uh, it's uh, useful if you are dealing with threads or structured concurrency in any, any, any ways. So basically, uh, it's a place where you can store values so that uh, they become available per thread. So you can make uh, thread-specific, uh, thread-safe values available. And there's a nice API for that. And there's some background information here. But as this one is an overview, I'm not going to spend more time here. By the way, I've already made some videos on ThreadLocal on my channel. And I might make a deep dive if you are interested. And by the way, feel free to drop comments, requests. I will always uh, see what kind of feedback I get on my channel. And if you are interested in uh, scoped values, I will definitely do a deep dive. I might do... Uh, otherwise as well. Okay, so what's our second uh, feature here? Well, there's key derivation function API. This is a little bit kind of more involved to explain, but one part of this is to prepare for life beyond the quantum uh, decryption. Uh, so the quantum computing is making advances and uh, if somebody manages to crack public key crypt cryptography, if or when, using, using quantum computing, that would basically break all the banking applications, uh, all the military applications in the world. Uh, Bitcoin would, would go bye-bye. Everybody could just crack out everybody's uh, wallet. So uh, we still have time to prepare for that. And this has been a special interest for me. And it's not straightforward, just kind of drop-in fix. 
there's a lot of parts and this is one of those modules i in my earlier java 24 video i showed another chip that's related and there will be more coming up but this one deals with the uh, key algorithms and it enables a few things uh, one part of that is uh, the quantum uh, cryptography readiness or beyond quantum quantum computing readiness for the cryptography and another interesting thing here is that uh, it uh, introduces way where you can derive keys from existing keys so instead of just dealing with the main keys you can use the keys to generate new keys in a kind of uh, common api way so we uh, a few goodies coming up again uh, what's the impact for you if you deal with cryptography in any ways using java there might be some interest if not you are probably not going to notice it but remember that some of the improvements are important nevertheless um, because uh, they enable things in the libraries you end up using so perhaps we will have spring boot module for life uh, beyond quantum computing one day we actually will i'm sure of that uh, module import declarations this is a kind of fast one to explain but uh, Quite long time ago, Java went modular, and I have plenty of videos on that already here. You probably have been using modules more or less all the time already. They are either more visible for you or not so visible at all. But the new thing that we are actually going to be getting is simply this. So instead of trying to import all the packages in the module, all, all things inside those packages, you can now just import the module altogether and you will get uh, on demand all the public top level classes and interfaces in the packages that have been exported uh, by the module and by the modules that are read by the current module so there is a little bit of kind of inheritance going on as well again might not be such a big deal there's actually kind of <clears throat> stylistic uh, war going on some people prefer to be very explicit on what they import some people like the ease, easy of uh, getting big imports at time, especially if you create a rapid uh, proof of concept or demo, something that's not going to live very long. It's definitely easier to just uh, do big things with the uh, smallest amount of code. Now, if you are doing some kind of long-term software, uh, you can argue which one is better. I'm not going there, but it's to be more explicit, by the way. <laughs> that's my opinion on that. But anyway, I like all the things that make it very easy to get started with Java and to do quick demos with Java. When I learned Java in university 30 years ago, it was not, it was far from a kind of easy. There was a lot of clunky uh, hoops that you had to jump through. So nowadays, uh, Java in 2025 has ridiculous uh, kind of shortcuts that make it very much easier. You can write scripts with Java quite easily. And speaking of which, JEP uh, 512 uh, introduces compact, compact source files and instance main methods. And this has been proposed in earlier versions of Java. It has uh, been um, kind of proposed with different names. So it's uh, underwent a lot of changes, but now it's final. So we have a bunch of little goodies here. This is the classical hello world example that uh, everybody started with when, when we learned Java way back in 90s or in the early tw uh, 2000. And uh, now there's a bunch of uh, improvements that we can do so. Well, improvements or simplifications at least. So we have the class definition is not necessary anymore. You can just introduce compact main method. Second thing, the main method doesn't need to do that uh, mantra public static void main string arcs you know all the drill you can just do void main it's enough this is my main function drop the wrapper class and we just end up having something like this awesome for a tiny little script tool awesome for teaching somebody to write in write code in java so very awesome ways to do uh, things in a little bit simpler shortcut fashion okay now there's a little bit uh, more recent uh, update as well. So there is a nice IO, um, I, uh, new class in the Java long pack package called IO that introduces a little bit basic uh, shortcuts to do simple basic things. Um, so again, you don't need to dive in explaining what is system out, etc. 
So it's a nice kind of new API for doing old things in a little bit easier. So we could move from the old version, this one, to this one. So as I tend to say with these updates, if you are an old timer, doesn't matter to you mostly unless you do scripts or kind of one of uh, rapid Java tooling or teach Java is another use case. Uh, if you already have a legacy code base, this doesn't do much for you. But if you if you're learning Java, um, want to get the easy route, this will make life a lot easier. And also, if you just want to do something, whip out something really quick, might be fun. I, I enjoy these shortcuts, but they are not going to kind of take my world, to so to say. It takes about 10 seconds more for me, or not even that with a good IDE, to do the full dance. But then you need to know what the full dance means, and uh, <clears throat> then you need to not be curious about asking a lot of questions. What does this actually mean? So I used to be a teacher. I used to teach Java for my uh, day job, a lot of that for a decade. And therefore I would have enjoyed having these kind of easy paths to that. Okay, what else we have? We have the final kind of syntax level change, which is flexible constructor bodies. And again, this thing, thing has been alive in many previous releases with different titles. Now it's called flexible constructor bodies. And to summarize it uh, heavily, um, earlier we were kind of, well, there's not a good example of earlier, but the idea is that you would be allowed to do some things in your constructors before you need to kind of call the super or this. So you would be, it would be possible for you to kind of uh, do some checks, uh, validation checks uh, before you start doing that super something dance which is a little bit different than the Java that we learned in the 90s. Uh, again, not a huge deal, but it just makes some kind of edge cases a little bit more sane. And uh, here is some examples of good use. So we have a constructor, we are getting edge parameter, we are validating it ahead before doing anything more. And uh, we are happy with edge, so then we can just continue. Uh, it makes sense mostly when you deal with the super calls and again tiny optimization just to make life a little bit easier now worth mentioning there is a few things you cannot do so uh, before you call the super you cannot touch any of these variables or these functions or super fields or functions so uh, you kind of do everything for just for the parameters you have for the local values that you get here you can play with these but once you touch the super, uh, then, then you go all the way. So there, you have to be a bit aware of the order and rules here if you want to use this. But it's um, kind of natural, I think. Just uh, loosening the rules a little bit. Now, the rest of the stuff I'm just going to summarize. Because all of these, none of these have to do with the code you write. All of these happen in the runtime environment. So we have some things, uh, optimizations for the ahead of time, command line ergonomics and method profiling. Then we have a, a cooperative sampling for the, what was the name? J JDK flight recorder, which I haven't been using, but very nice. So there's a little bit more introspection going on. And we have optional feature for compact object headers, which can save you a lot of memory if, if you uh, are using huge heaps, especially. And Shenandoah garbage collector has been around for quite some time, but now the generational uh, version of it, variant of it, is out of, uh, out of experimental. So uh, you don't need the experimental switches anymore. Now, many of these are, of course, not enabled by default. So there is a lot of uh, switches you can now use, but we used to kind of have to do this unlock experimental VM options, but now it's out of experimental. So you can just unlock Shenandoah separately as opposed to default. And then you can unlock Shenandoah generational if you like. And same goes with the other things. Every time you do some introspection, you probably have to kind of enable it separately, but now you don't need to double with any experimental things. 
So to put these together, more performance, better use of resources, better uh, insights into what is going on. Most of it is optional, so you unlock it. It's available with Java 25. When Java 25 comes available, right now when recording this video, uh, worth mentioning that it's not available yet. It will be released in September this year for general availability. Before that moment, you need to just play with the early access version like I am doing. And uh, after, 20, uh, after the September and after Java 25, you know the drill. Uh, people will start working on 26, 27, 28. Um, the release train is merciless. There will be new version uh, approximately every half a year. And uh, therefore the number of kind of changes is uh, more or less manageable. So it's quite a lot still, but less than you would think. Remember that there's a lot of uh, things that have been kind of uh, also fixed. So this is just the high level highlights, but there's typically hundreds or even thousands of tiny fixes included as well. And now before I end my video, one last uh, reminder. Remember that many of you might be updating to 25 uh, from version 21 or even version 17 or version 8. So uh, when you are upgrading to 25 from 21, you are not actually getting this list. You are getting all the releases in the intermediate Java versions. I'm going to flash it on the screen here so you can marvel at how many things have changed. So earlier days of Java, we only got the, the major long-term support versions and it might take uh, several years to get them. Nowadays, we get the intermediate versions and then we get the long-term support versions, which is Java 25. I think uh, my opinion is that it's awesome how Java is keeping up to date and staying fresh. So it's still being opt performance optimized all the time, uh, which is awesome. Any bit of code you have running on any version of Java will get immediate benefit upgrading to Java 25. You will get all the development for the performance immediately. We get some improvements to the language, which are more or less important for you. We get some uh, shortcuts and easy paths, and we get awesome things like becoming a good platform for cryptography that will not be broken by quantum computing advancements. And uh, dabbling a little bit with crypto, crypto and Bitcoin, uh, I'm very happy to see that progress is being made because any tools written in Java will benefit greatly from that. And we need to kind of prepare them way before somebody manages to crack uh, the current encryption with quantum. So this is definitely one area that I'm following up very, very excitedly. All the previous stuff that I just skipped will be interesting as well. Perhaps I make a separate video of those. But uh, with Java 25, you have to remember that if you double with the preview stuff, it might change in the next release or it might go away. So if you want stable stuff, uh, you probably want to stick to fully released features. As always, hey, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it so much. I'm uh, about to break 5000 subscribers right now. If you haven't already, a welcome, you're welcome to become one. And as always, <clears throat> drop any feedback, click those buttons and drop any questions, suggestions for my upcoming videos. Keep that stream incoming. It keeps my channel alive. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.